Continuing from the previous lesson, we'll look at some of the common dynamic features that you'll be using pretty much regardless of the type of work that you'll be doing within RealFlow. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. And I'm going to go ahead and start to talk about some of the dynamic forces that we can apply to some of our particles within RealFlow. So if I go ahead and just simulate what we had in the previous lesson, you can pretty much just see these particles are falling down from this emitter. Now these really are not falling because of gravity of any kind. Really, these particles are just moving in the direction of this arrow of the emitter. So you can see this a little bit better if I were to rotate this off to the side and simulate this. There they go. So my particles just sort of fly off into the air with really no uh, sort of a gravity pulling them back down. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back. So let's go ahead and talk about adding some of these demons um, onto our emitters to start to make these particles behave correctly. So within this demon list, let's go ahead and add in the gravity. Okay, and you can see it's now added in this little gravity effector. So now, whenever I start this simulation, now this gravity can actually pull these particles downward. So now as I pull this back, you can sort of see how these particles are reacting. So you can control the amount of gravity that you have. So just select this and let's go ahead and collapse this. So by default, the gravity strength is going to be set to about 9.8. Uh, if you wanted to be able to set this down to a lower number, something like 4 maybe, if you find that your gravity is not really uh, giving you quite the look you want, you can fully control that within real flow. Really nice feature to have. So I'm going to take this back up to something like 9.8. Okay, so here we go. Now let's start to take a look at some of these actual um, attributes and what adjusting these attributes is really going to get for you. So let's first of all start to take up this resolution. Again, by default, it's going to be set to about 1. Let's see what happens when we take this up to a higher number, something like 2. Some of these numbers, when you change them, it, uh, RealFlow is going to send out a message that says that uh, your emitter is basically going to have to be reset for you to be able to see this change. So just hit yes. Let's go ahead and reset this. And now by increasing the resolution, we now have a lot more particles to be able to work with. Now if you wanted to, if you take a look at the statistics, you can see the number of particles that we currently have within our scene. 3,120. So as I play this back, this number will keep going up. This is where, um, if your system really starts to bog down, where you could set this max number of particles. So if you, if you have a certain amount that you uh, really want to be able to top out at, you could say once it hits 3,000 particles, go ahead and stop the simulation. So let's see what this does. So once it hits 3,000, we should stop emitting particles. So we'll go ahead and let this play through. And now once it hits 3,000, now it stops emitting particles. So that's where this max particles will come into play. So by default, it'll be set to about 50,000. Now, if you recall one thing that I did say earlier, um, one thing is very dependent as far as your overall resolution is this size of your emitter. So just to illustrate this, let me set this back to one. Okay, so we have the typical amount of particles coming out of this. But if I were to take this emitter and scale it up, what we should see are a ton more particles that are being emitted out of this. So this resolution is not a uh, set in stone amount of particles that are going to be coming out of this. This is really, really dependent on the overall size of your emitter. So that's something that you're probably going to have to be aware of. So I'll go ahead and set this. Let me take this back down to one. And I'll set that one back down to one as well. So that should pretty much get, get us back to where we were. Okay, I'll collapse this back up. And let's take a look back at these particles. We have the density, 
which again is pretty much controlling the overall weight of these particles. So if I set my density a lot lower, something like 2, for example, let's go ahead and reset this. You can now see that it, once I set, start to set this density at a really low number, now my uh, real flow is really having to think about this. So probably more than likely, once this uh, frame is done calculating, you can see how these particles are now flying all over the place. That's because these particles really aren't heavy enough to fall correctly. They're just spraying out all over the place. So, and you can see this is really thinking pretty hard. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Okay, let me go ahead and just set this back up to a higher number. So hit OK. So that's pretty much where the density comes in. So if I simulate this, now let me go ahead and take a look at what the internal and the external pressure are going to do. So again, the internal pressure is the amount of force coming from within these particles. So let me go ahead and set this to a much lower number. So my internal pressure is now much higher than my external pressure. So let's see what this does. Let me actually set the density of these a little bit lower because right now these particles are a bit too heavy to be able to be adequately affected. So as I start to increase this amount of internal pressure, crank it up even more, you can see how it's forcing these particles outward in a pretty chaotic fashion. So that's sort of what this internal pressure is doing. It's forcing these particles away from each other and giving you something a little bit more random. It may be what you want, maybe not. So let me go ahead and do the same with the, in, with the external pressure. So let me simulate this. And what we should see is the external pressure actually collapsing this particle stream because the external pressure is much greater, so it's pushing these particles in into a much smaller stream. You can sort of see that happening. So that's where the internal and the external pressure come into play. So most of the time, if these are at pretty much the same value, you'll get particles that fall pretty much as they should. So I may want to set this density back up in order to get these to function right. The viscosity, again, um, is going to be by default set to 3. If I wanted to set this to a much lower viscosity, now they should uh, not stick together quite so much. So you can see that these really aren't sticking together quite as much as they were when the viscosity was set all the way up to 1. So that's sort of how these different attributes can sort of work in conjunction with each other. So as I play this through, you can see that this uh, overall animation, if I were to play this through, these particles just last forever. They're really not ever going to die. If I wanted to be able to make these particles actually die at a certain point, there is actually a demon that will let us do that, and that's the age demon. So if I set this up, by default, the lifespan on these particles is going to be set to one frame. So if I animate this, my particles only last one frame. So if I wanted to be able to set these up at 20 frames, now when I play this through, they should die once they hit about 20 frames. Okay, you can also set a little bit of variation up in that to make it seem a little bit more random. So now my particles actually die after 20 frames. And you can see now overall this simulation runs much faster because it's not having to calculate all of these different particles that are no longer being seen. So that's how we can use a couple of these demons and start to use a couple of these very common attributes together to start to pretty much affect the way that our dynamic simulations are going to look within RealFlow. So in the next lesson, we'll keep moving on.